Hello, my name's Glenn Vickery, and welcome to my YouTube channel, Kiwi Bushcraft and Survival. And today we're going to be covering um, a new plant uh, called flax, um, or otherwise known as harakiki. Uh, this is uh, probably one of New Zealand's or Aotearoa's uh, main plants that was used in the past. Um, and uh, so anyway, we'll get straight into it. So here is the flax plant, okay, uh, it's, everybody's seen it in New Zealand, okay, and it does grow um, in other parts of the world because it's been uh, taken around other parts of the world, okay. It's a very, very hardy plant, uh, very, very, it's a, it's a tufted plant or tufted leaves, okay, it's a, a bunch, the, all the leaves are together, it looks tufted. All right. um, the leaves are like very very long spear shape okay you can see them there very long spear shape okay and these um, leaves uh, were probably one of the most important leaves that we have in our country where they were used for the fiber or the thread the threads um, in the leaves okay so what you'd basically do is you'd um, get a, uh, a muscle shell or a shell a sharp shell and it would, would basically um, open cut the uh, leaf in half okay and then um, scrape one side of it and scrape the other side of it and um, pull the fibers out and that would be used for making cordage um, and things like um, fishing lines and fishing nets and you, anything for cordage basically okay um, these you'll see these big shoots coming out here okay these are the flower uh, flower shoots okay these are old ones here all right and uh, in early spring early summer um, these are just full with flowers okay either red yellow um, flowers okay and they're just very very uh, beautiful looking um, flowers these ones here actually aren't the old ones these hang on let me have a look these are young ones these are new ones coming through okay these are new ones coming through and here's some old ones here okay you can see there's some old ones okay you can see they're all crusty and um, almost falling apart okay Alright, so say so here's a crusty one. Okay, there. Alright, it's old. Okay. Now these stems here, when they get old and really woody, um, apparently, and I've never actually tried it myself, uh, they're good for what we call carrying fire. So you can burn them, okay, burn them and then carry that fire. You can see this one here, it's like very, very, very brittle. Okay, so you can burn this. Okay, heat it up, burn it, and then put the flames out, and then as an ember, this will burn. This will burn for ages, okay? And obviously you, you can um, wrap, it, wrap it up with some green leaves, like some of the green harakiki leaves here, okay? Take it, carry it for the day, okay? And then when you get to your campsite, uh, give this a wave around in the wind, okay? And the embers on it will catch a fire, okay? Or catch... Um, will turn into flame okay and hence you can start your fire up um, um, yeah without without having to rub sticks together if, if that was if that was the case another tree is tikauka I've covered that before or tea tree otherwise known as cabbage tree that's another one that's been uh, in the past used for carrying fire apparently and um, um, yeah, but uh, it, it has to be dry, eh? You've got to dry it out first, make sure it's like completely dry. Okay, so these are the uh, old flower, the old flower pods here. All right, you know, they're the old flowers. This one's all brittle and old. And these, are, as I said, this other one here, these are the new flowers that are coming through. Okay, the new ones, you can feel them. Okay, and up here right at the top of this one here we can see 
some still good flowers. Okay. There. Alright, I'll bring it down, bring it a bit closer. See if I can reach that. Okay. this down a bit okay so here's some orange ones okay very beautiful flowers okay now these are so important inside these flowers is pollen okay and it's pollen that we as human beings um, can get at okay um, I don't know if I can get into any of these ones but let's pull it out okay and what you do is you get the leaves that the birds love these okay so the tuis and um, the bell birds all that kind of they they love this they get their beaks right in here and in, inside the flower all right and in, right into there where the stamen, stamens i think they're called come from in there and they get the um liquid pollen out okay and it's just fantastic so what you normally do i don't know if i'm going to be able to do this because i've only got like the one one hand operating the camera and whatnot but what you do is you get them and you tap them okay you, you you tip them upside down like that and you tap and you have your hand underneath underneath here okay underneath as you tap it okay you can do it in a bucket or um, whatever you want in a gourd back in the old days but you can tap it on your hand Okay, and what will happen is the um, pollen, the liquid pollen will fall out from the flower. Okay, it will fall out and it will fall into your hand. Okay, or in the gourd. Alright, a cup, whatever you want. And from there you can drink it. Now that pollen was so important because it would be um, uh, added to like the other berries and plants that are bland. Okay, in the bush. So things like tea which is um, we'll cover another day, but it, it's it's just there's just no flavour there, okay? Um, things like the cabbage tree or tikuuka that I showed you earlier, or that I've showed you earlier in uh, other videos, um, it can be quite bland, okay? So you can add this flavour, and it's beautiful, it's sweet. It's one of my favourite um, bush drinks when I'm when I'm um, cruising around in the bush and. Uh, yeah, it's just so nice. It gives you, a, you know, beautiful. Anyway, um, other things that the harakiki you can do with them is um, right at the base of the leaves. I'm not going to do it today, but right at the base of the leaves, you get right down into the base of the leaves and pull them out and there's like a gum. It's like a, a glue. Okay, it's like a white fluid. And um, um, I've eaten that before and it's it's basically tasteless it doesn't taste like anything okay it just probably tastes like your your um, um, it's got the same substance or texture as probably glue okay <laughs> but it's clear it's like clear and it doesn't taste like anything so obviously glue has a taste this stuff or this um, um, doesn't have any flavor in the bot any flavor at all it's just it's just nothing there okay but you can obviously eat it okay um, what did they used to use that for as well in the old days the um, they would get that I don't know what you I don't even know what you call it it's like you get that like well, let's just call it glue you get that glue substance and they would actually use it as a glue they'd, they'd put it on the envelopes or paper fold the paper up and then they'd put that onto the paper to seal the seal the paper like a seal it as an envelope and then they would send it away because it would actually seal the envelope or paper like glue okay and so when they ran out of glue in the old days and early settler days they'd use um, harakiki all right the the the, um, the the stuff that you can eat right at the base of the leaves and it's clear so it's like a clear fluid, all right, um, but not as um, 
yeah, it's not like water. It's just, but it's clear, but it's got a bit more substance to it. All right, so uh, there's a couple of things there that you can use harakiki for. Um, most importantly, it was fibre and food that we used it for. And, um, I mean, you break a leg, you know, you can strap your leg up um, and make a splint with this stuff. Um, if you need to make a rope or if you know how to make cordage, uh, it's probably something I'll do another day, making cordage. And I'll go into this uh, harakiki a bit in a bit more detail. But um, for today, uh, we'll think we'll leave it at that. Okay, cheers. Uh, subscribe, comment, like, and um, um, yeah, I'll see you next time. Cheers.